you know, people are looking at what uh, this term subconcussive events. And are, the, are these cumulative? And can these produce long-term problems? And my first response to that is um, scientific, is that uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't know. I don't, I don't have any scientific evidence to suggest that that's the case. Um, it could be the case that um, we're missing it in the, in the clinical realm because we just don't measure it very often. I mean, I don't know how many times a four-year-old bumps his head on a coffee table or how many times dad, you know, gets his bell rung, you know, very lightly when he's playing flag football when he's in college. And does that make him now a, um, an attorney rather than a doctor or a Republican rather than a Democrat or something like that? You just don't know. But um, all teasing aside, um, I don't think there is such a thing as a subconcussive event. And this is from science. Um, and this was work that was done by um, Yuichi Katayama. He was a gentleman, uh, director and chairman of neurosurgery now at, at Neon University. And while I was at UCLA, we, we looked at the uh, uh, different levels of severity of the injury that we could induce in tissue and in animals. And it was, there was not a problem until you reached a particular threshold. This wasn't a linear event. So there wasn't this subconcussive thing, and then you get this concussion. It was it was either nothing, and then the whole brain went into concussion. And this is a uh, a proposal that's been around since uh, 1944. It was originally described by a gentleman by the name of Earl Walker and Denny Brown, and a gentleman by the name of Liao, and he described spreading depression. And so uh, a I don't. At this point, I don't have any scientific evidence that there is such a thing as a subconcussive syndrome. B, if there is, it's uh, probably not global. Uh, one of the things I disagreed with the, some of the Colorado guidelines and the recent uh, guidelines for the National Football League in terms of concussion severity is that I really don't think, I think there is such a thing as severity of concussion, but I think it's more important to understand what type of concussions. And a very good example is perhaps the blast type concussions that you're getting in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan are different than the type of concussions that the National Football League are getting. So you may have these, what you think are subconcussive uh, events, but they really are a concussive event for a particular part of the brain where the rest of the brain is not. And it may be that regional change that occurs over time. But that's something we, need, we, we would like to learn more about.